Cyril Bongamin Gane takes on Tanabosa to headline the prelims of UFC Fight Night 165 on ESPN Plus 23 South Korea Busan, the Korean Zombie versus Frankie Edgar. I can't wait for this fight, mainly because I can't wait to see Cyril Gane fight once more. I'm looking forward to it. He's an undefeated heavyweight, new to the game of MMA, but not new to life in general. He's quite old, 29 years old, coming into the heavyweight division. He just entered this year. Taking on Tanaboso, who's coming off a big win in himself against uh, Daniel Spitz, I believe his name was. And I actually picked Spitz to beat Tanaboso because Spitz is a freakishly large giant. But Tanaboso put that mullet to good work and got a big win over Cyril Gane. Uh, not Cyril Gane, no, over Daniel Spitz. And now he's taking on Cyril Gane. This is what it's earned you. You get a good win that you're expected to lose. And you get a chance to try and derail the hype train of Cyril Gane. I don't think it's going to happen. I think Cyril Gane's going to fucking walk through this fat fuck. And get another win on his undefeated record. Improving to 6-0. and And before you tell me that Cyril Gane doesn't have the right amount of experience. Shouldn't be taken too seriously. I'm willing to offer you this. Chael Sonnen style, as soon as I can find this motherfucker's record somewhere, I'm going to offer you a real serious bit of information here. Are you ready? Cyril Gane, you look at his record, you think this guy has no experience. Who possibly could he be facing with a record of 5-0? I'll tell you who. Adam Jaika, who's 7-1 and one in the heavyweight division. His only loss to Cyril Gane by KO. That was Cyril's second ever fight. He fought a guy who was 7-0. and Gave him his first loss. Then I tell you about Roger Souza. I mean, look at his record. Guess what is his? 10 and 2. One of his two losses, Cyril Gane by KO. Vicious. Cyril Gane moves on. That's not enough of a challenge. Get me in the UFC. Does he ask for a can to crush in his debut? Nope. Takes on Rafael Pessoa. 10 and 1. Guess who his only loss is? Cyril Gane. Takes on another guy, Dontel Mays, in the UFC. This was, to be fair, a short notice replacement. He was supposed to be fighting someone else. 7-3, and three, was 7-2. and two. Good record. Decent record for a heavyweight. Makes him look like an absolute fool and then submits him in the third round. Cyril Gane is some kind of beast. And I don't think we've even discovered his full potential yet because he's fighting. And get this. and This is why I said he's not young in the game as well. He's 29 years old. He's been striking his entire fucking life. Trains with Francis Ngannou as his main training partner, which to me gives me the information that he can take a fucking punch. You aren't Francis Ngannou's training partner in France if you can't take a punch. He must have an amazing chin, which worries me because he does look like Anthony Joshua, which would kind of discredit the chin theory that I'm going with here. But I think he has got a cracking chin on him to be fucking full-time training partner of Francis Ngannou. You've got to be able to take a shot well. And I can see him really putting work on this fat fuck Tanabosa and improving his undefeated record, honestly. I really can. I don't think Tanabosa's fought anyone on uh, Cyril Gaines' level, which is surprising to say because Cyril Gaines only just got here and is still unranked in the UFC. But I think he's going to beat Tanabosa. I really do. I like this guy. And again, when I'm talking about his age, 29 years old, the older guy out of the two of them with him and Tanabosa. Tanabosa's got more experience in the cage of MMA. He's, uh, he's also younger than Cyril Gane as well. But I like Cyril Gane's attitude. And here's why. 29 years old. Very late to make his debut in MMA. So you know what he does? He becomes the most active guy I've ever seen in my entire life. Fights on the 10th of August this year. Beats Rafael Pessoa, who's 10-1. and Was 10-0. and Finishes him in the first round by submission. The kickboxer, Cyril Gane... Finishes a guy by submission in his UFC debut. Doesn't sit around and celebrate. Turns right back around two months later in August. Uh, in uh, October from August. Takes on Dontel Mays. Whoops him and submits him in the third round. Again, the striker gets another submission victory in the UFC. He's obviously learning some shit real fast. And it's by heel hook. It's by heel hook. It's not like he's rear naked choking someone, which anyone can really do. Or bulldog choking someone, which is something that you don't really have to train jujitsu to know to know what to do in that situation. It's kind of self-explanatory. He's fucking jumping to a heel hook and splitting Dontel May's knee apart in the third round with four seconds left to go. He could have easily rode out a decision, but he said, "You know what? I'm gonna fucking become Damian Meyer quickly. I'll become Paul Harris just like that." I love this guy. I'm in. 
And then after October, what does he do? Does he celebrate two wins in two months? No. He turns right back around in December, gets himself the headline of the prelims. I honestly think this should be on the main card because there are some fucking dog shit fights on the main card. And I don't know why this one's on the prelims, to be honest with you guys. Park Yun Yong versus Mark andre Barriol. Barriol's gone fucking 0-2 in his last two fights, so no one gives a fuck about him. Ya Dutton versus Mike Rodriguez. No one gives a fuck about them either. Cyril Gaines should have been on the main card. But either way, he gets a spot to headline the prelims. Fair enough. They're working him up the card quite slowly. I'm looking forward to this one, man. I really am. If Tanabosa fucking clips Cyril Gain on the chin and flattens him out cold, I'm going to be so upset. Because we need some life in the heavyweight division. Greg Hardy just failed. Tui Vars has been sent back to the fucking shadow realm, honestly. Like, he's just fucking skyrocketed and dipped very quickly in his career. We need a young guy at heavyweight. We have Rosenstruik, but I'm hungry for more. I want Cyril Gain in there. I really do. I feel like he's gonna go. He's gonna go far in the UFC if he keeps improving like he's improving and keeps this active. I could see him being ranked in the top ten by April because he's fighting every two months. And if he wins this one, he says he wants to go to France afterwards. I don't think he's gonna go to France. I think a great fight after this one. If he wins, I'm I'm acting as if he's won the fight already because I just think he's gonna pick apart Tanabosa. Like some fucking amateur. And treat Tanabosa like an amateur. And then potentially finish him at some point as well. I feel like we're missing out a few things from Cyril Gain. A big KO finish. And he has them on his record. And he can do it. But sometimes he plays with guys a little bit too much. And I'll tell you why that's not a good thing. For a hardcore fan. Watching a guy play with a guy on the feet. Sounds weird. But we're going to continue. Watching a guy have no respect for someone's stand up. And just completely ridiculing them and not even trying for a finish and just picking them apart at range the entire three rounds of a fight. Don't get me wrong, that's impressive. But to really capture some hype, you need to have that brutal KO clip. Even if it's just one of them. You need that one clip of you flattening someone to really make an oomph kind of statement, you know? And I'm looking forward to it. I think he may be able to get that KO in this fight. And after this one, if he wins, knock on wood, I think he's going to win. If he does win, I'd like to see him take a little bit of time. And this is the thing with Cyril Gane. Him taking a little bit of time means three months for me. There's a card in Columbus, Ohio with Francis Ngannou, his main training partner, as the main event versus Jarzinho Rosenstreich. If he wins this one, take a holiday. And be back in three months. That's the difference between him and everyone else. A holiday for him is a month off from fighting. So if he wins this one, take some time, evolve your game. And then we'll see him make the jump in competition. This, I, this in retrospect, is kind of just a can shiner. Like, we, we're just making Cyril Gain look really good here on the headliner of a prelims. That's the way this fight has been put together. And we'll see if he can get the job done. Listen, Tanabosa is a beast. He just beat Daniel Spitz. He doesn't really have any creditable wins or fights before that. But he, I don't know, he beat a guy who was 6-2 and two in the UFC by a close decision. I don't really know what to say. I don't think he's going to beat Cyril Gain. I think if anyone bets on Tanabosa, they know what they're betting for. They're betting for a Hail Mary overhand out of nowhere because he looks like Roy Nelson. But I feel like Cyril Gain wins. And then goes on to his tougher pieces of competition, which probably are going to be something like Ben Rothwell, Stefan Struve, maybe Todd Duffy. Someone who's a bit more credited in the UFC. And I look forward to it. There's a few guys around that I'd like to see him take on. And in Columbus, Ohio, do we know any heavyweights from Ohio? Listen, Ben Rothwell's American. That's enough. That's enough. Ben Rothwell versus Cyril Gane, Bon Gamin. I think he's going to get the win by brutal KO against Tanabosa. I think now's the time for him to really show what he's about. He's got the headliner of the prelims slot. When you get a slot like that, you need to make the most of it. I think he's going to make the most of it and finish Tanabosa in the second round by TKO. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Click that button there. And I swear to God, if Cyril Gain wins this and he's not on the main card for his next fight... I'm going to lose my fucking mind. 
And now pay attention to that fucking Sean Shelby because you don't want that shit, okay? He's on. He shouldn't even be on the prelims for this fight. Everyone's paying attention to him. No one gives a fuck about fucking Mark Andre Barry or whatsoever. Get him on the main card or don't have him in the UFC at all if he wins this one. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Click that button there. Goodbye. I'll see you later.